everybody, this is uh, part three of our video series on uh, creating uh, path objects in the FreeCAD Path Workbench using Python. Uh, in this one, I'm going to go through the basics of the uh, command and path objects themselves and show you how to create a simple path and put it on the screen. So switching over, um, I've got just an empty document here. I have nothing in it at all. And uh, in order to do anything with path, of course, we have to import path. Um, now that the path has two main objects that are used everywhere, uh, the command object represents is equivalent to a single line of G code. Uh, it's like a single move, a G zero rapid move or a G one feed move. Uh, there's a few others that are supported arcs and and uh, uh, drilling moves and so forth. But those those are all different flavors of a command. And then commands get assembled together into paths. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a command object. And I'll say uh, C1 equals uh, path.command. And that's it. I now have a command object. And I can say, now I can start to set properties of it. So C1.name uh, is going to equal and we'll call it uh, um, G1. Now the name property corresponds to the type of command that it is, whether it's a feed or a rapid move. So now if I type C1 name, it'll, yeah, it's a G1 command. Um, I can set the other uh, parameters, like uh, it's XYZ destination by saying C1.parameters and passing to it a Python dictionary. Now, a Python dictionary is always in curly braces, so this is going to be like x in quotes, colon, and then the x value. We're going to go to 0, 0.0 and um, then y. We're going to go to stay at 0, 0.0 and then z, and we're going to go to 50. Sorry, parameters equals the dictionary. And I just realized that I made a mistake because this should be a rapid move, not a feed move. So I'm going to reset its name to G0. Now, uh, if you look at C1 and scroll down the list of available uh, functions and properties, you'll see that it has this method called 2G code you call like this and you see that it returns back its G code string G0 X0 Y0 Z 50 okay now that was quite a few steps to create that simple path so I'll show you a couple other syntaxes that are valid for creating uh, path objects you can do pretty much all of that on one line so we'll create C2 is equal to um, path dot command <clears throat> and uh, pass in the name and then pass in the dictionary and we'll go to x thirty five point zero <clears throat> y Go to 11.8, Z will go to 10. So this is going to kind of ramp downwards from where we wrap it to, we'll ramp down to our, uh, we'll feed down to our, our uh, Z of 10. Like that. Oh, sorry. Wanted the closing bracket. looks correct <clears throat> and there's one more uh, even simpler syntax that's valid and you can do something like c3 dot set from G code and then pass in a just a valid line of, G, of regular G code so we'll do g1 
x35 y29 z10 just wrap it up in quotes <clears throat> and see that it's also valid <clears throat> excuse me okay so now I got three commands and I need to assemble them into a path so I can say p equals path and I have an empty path object and now I need to add the commands to it so p dot add commands and I pass in a list and it's going to be c1 c2 and c3 and now if I say and scroll through this list you see that the path object has what we just called the command to add the command or a method to call the add commands to the path you can copy it you can delete a command from it you can insert a command in between others if you know its position and you can call a similar 2g code method which will do and you see that I got the entire um, the entire G code output from the path but so far we don't have anything on this on the screen yet so how do we show that well that's actually remarkably easy um, what we first have to do is create an object to show so I'm just gonna say O equals app dot active document dot add object and this wants the type of object keep popping up path feature and then the name that you want it to be we'll call it my path like that and you'll see that the path object immediately popped up into the list here but there's still nothing showing well that's because this this is a python feature object uh, it's going to handle the the visual representation of our of our path on the screen right now our path only exists in memory uh, but this feature object is going to handle the uh, the view provider the rendering of the uh, of the path on the screen but we have to make a an association between this object that we just created and the path that we already had so I'm going to say o dot path equals our p object, and you you see it immediately popped up here, and there it is. So there is our g zero rapid move. Actually, I believe it's looking like I get the orientation right. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so it rapids up to 50, then it feeds down, and then it feeds over like that. Try to make that a little bit bigger. No, that's hard to see on. So it's actually kind of sitting like this with the, this is uh, x0, y0 right here. So it rapids up, then ramps down, and then feeds across on that G that uh, um, third command was uh, just along the y-axis. Okay, so that is basically how you do it. Now, um, you'll see we don't have anything in here that looks like a, a path job or a tool or anything like that. Um, we only have a very stripped down path feature and already it's rendering on the screen. Um, now, if I switch over to the path workbench you see that I can't even X, you know, I can't post process it. Well, actually you can. Um, if you select this object and do file export and select G code as the export format, I give it a name and uh, I'll put it on the desktop here. It'll ask for a post processor, and if I just select the uh, generic post, uh, naturally, try a different one.
Let's try uh, example post should work. Um, it did, it finished post processing. Now that particular post processor doesn't show the editor on the screen, but um, it, uh, um, it did put the output out there and I could open it up and look at it and it would contain exactly what we created. So that's it for this. Uh, in the next tutorial, we're gonna dig in and actually write the, uh, the script to uh, cut the ridges on the block object. And I hope to tune in for that one. That's it. Thanks.